Among high-risk surgical patients with suspected acute cholecystitis, percutaneous gallbladder drainage has been the standard next step in management. Although it carries a high clinical rate of technical success and response, complications including bleeding or bile peritonitis has been reported up to 12% and higher among cirrhotics with portal hypertension. Over the past decade, endoscopic internal gallbladder drainage has proven to be a safe and effective alternative in selective high-risk surgical patients, particularly among those with advanced liver disease. We describe two endoscopic gallbladder drainage approaches among high-risk surgical patients with acute cholecystitis. This case involves a 51-year-old male with a past medical history of advanced liver disease and not a transplant candidacy presented with abdominal pain and septic shock. Cross-sectional imaging revealed calculus acute cholecystitis in presence of a large amount of ascites. Patient achieved hemodynamic stability after resuscitation. Due to the presence of portal hypertension with ascites, endoscopic transpapillary drainage with the intent of immediate gallbladder decompression and maintenance of long-term cystic duct patency or possible bridge for definitive future elective surgery if the patient's liver function should improve was the preferred approach versus urgent surgery or percutaneous drainage. After standard biliary cannulation and cholangiogram, identification of cystic duct takeoff is attempted. The cystic duct can arise from either side of the common bile duct. A standard sphincterotome is naturally bowed and preferred for right-sided cystic duct takeoffs. As opposed to left-sided cystic duct, a swing tip autotone catheter that bows in the opposite direction may be more suitable for successful cannulation. In this case, the cystic duct was not identified despite complete occlusion cholangiogram, making free wire cannulation challenging. In preparation for cholangioscopy to perform direct cystic wire cannulation, a biliary sphincterotomy was performed. After advancing to the upper third of the main duct and withdrawing the cholangioscope, the cystic duct was identified. In this view, the cystic duct orifice lies deep to the main bile duct which explains the challenges of prior standard free wire cannulation. A Boston Scientific NaviPro 035 inch soft wire was used to cannulate the cystic duct. Gentle wire advancement and use of a soft wire is recommended to avoid injury in the spiral configuration of the duct. Confirmation of successful gallbladder access is confirmed by wire coiling and presence of cholelithiasis after contrast injection. After exchanging to a stiff wire, a 7 French 12 cm double pigtail stent was advanced over the wire. The internal pigtail was deployed within the gallbladder and the external pigtail is then released within the duodenum, achieving successful transpapillary drainage. Six-month clinical follow-up and cross-sectional imaging contain no adverse events, including recurrent biliary pain, cholangitis, or distal stent migration suggestive of intact stent patency. Fluoroscopic guided cystic duct wire cannulation or free wire cannulation can be attempted but can be challenging. Standard or swing tip autotomes can accommodate wire cannulation depending upon level of cystic duct and its origin. After unsuccessful free wire cannulation, cholangioscopy is the preferred next step to achieve direct wire cannulation. Initial use of a soft wire is preferred to avoid injury upon advancing into the torturous cystic duct. It has been prospectively reported that transpapillary stents can be left in place for at least two years without routine exchange, as these stents act as a wick for continued biliary drainage. A 60-year-old female with decompensated alcoholic cirrhosis and profound thrombocytopenia presented with abdominal pain and fever without peritoneal signs or hemodynamic compromise. Transabdominal ultrasound revealed features suggestive of acute cholecystitis. Due to persistent right upper quadrant pain and non-surgical or percutaneous drainage candidacy, as well as presence of profound thrombocytopenia, precluding, if necessary, biliary sphincterotomy, it was determined that transmural approach with placement of a lumen-opposing metal stent was the preferred approach. After passing the standard adult endoscope and confirming no gastric or duodenal vessels, the therapeutic linear echo endoscope was used to identify the gallbladder containing sludge and a thick wall, which was less than one centimeter in distance from the gastric wall. Due to intervening duodenal vessels, the gastric approach at the prepyloric region was the preferred route of drainage. After mounting the one-step delivery device and achieving adequate abutment of the gallbladder wall, the sheath using pure cup mode was advanced through the gastric wall and into the gallbladder. The internal flange is then successfully released within the gallbladder. 
While keeping the sheath in a locked position, the catheter is then withdrawn, causing tenting of the internal flange along the gastric wall, ensuring that the external flange is within the working channel in preparation for safe deployment. After directing attention to the endoscopic view and simultaneously advancing the stent sheath while withdrawing the echo endoscope, the external flange is gradually deployed out of the working channel safely within the stomach. A copious amount of dark bile is identified draining into the stomach. Two pigtails plastic stents were successfully placed within the lumen or posing stent to potentially minimize stent blockage from gastric contents. No immediate complications occurred. Patient presented eight weeks later with melanoma and anemia. After resuscitation, urgent endoscopy was performed. As seen here, the external flange was partially buried within the prepyloric region of the stomach wall. To relieve tension applied by the short lumen opposing metal stent, the stent was safely removed through the mature tract using a rat tube forceps. After successful anti-grade wire cannulation through a widely patent mature cholecystogastrostomy gastrostomy tract using a standard stiff 035 guide wire, an anti-grade cholangiogram was successfully performed without extravasation confirming an intact cholecystogastrostomy. gastrostomy. Placement of two longer in length 4 cm pigtail plastic stents were placed to maintain the fistula tract and minimize the tension created by the smaller in length lumen opposing stent. No immediate or delayed complications occurred six months after repeat endoscopy while awaiting transplantation. A distance of less than one centimeter between the gallbladder wall and lumina wall is necessary upon placing the 10 millimeter in length transmural lumen opposing metal stent. Deployment of the external flange within the working channel makes certain for safe placement of the external flange within the GI lumen. Approach to gallbladder drainage to the stomach and duodenum is ultimately dictated by presence of intervening vessels, but proceed with caution when placing transgastric due to the potential increase of stent tension between the stomach and decompressed gallbladder wall. After suspected tract maturation, which may take longer in presence of portal hypertension and ascites, stent replacement with longer length stent may be required. Non-surgical acute cholecystitis, particularly among cirrhotic patients with portal hypertension, require management in a multidisciplinary fashion with endoscopic gallbladder drainage being an alternative bridge to definitive surgery. Although transmural drainage with the placement of a lumen opposing metal stent has its advantages, not requiring fluoroscopy, potential biliary sphincterotomy, and an absence of risk for posterior CP pancreatitis, we recommend, if safe and technically feasible, attempting first transpapillary approach due to its potential surgical morbidity. It has been reported that although transmural drainage is clinically successful, duodenal fistula repair during time of transplantation is technically challenging and can result in surgical complications. Finally, if transgastric approach is attempted, proceed with caution due to risk of buried stent and likely need of stent replacement.